All right, class, so starting off on the basics of glaze, things that you need to know are little containers. Little containers all say underglaze on them. They usually have this green logo. I gotta set this aside because I'm using this one. Um, underglaze. So underglaze is, or velvet underglazes are matte glazes. They are not shiny. These things are gonna look just pretty much the same color that you're gonna see when you look into these containers. So in this one we got, it's a, um, it's a hunter green. It's gonna have that green, nice green color to it. They don't change much when you put them in the in the kiln. Uh, Sometimes it might be a little brighter, just a touch brighter or a touch duller, depending on the type of glaze that it is. But for the most part, these things stay the exact same color uh, in the kiln, out of the kiln. Now, if you're using a matte glaze like this, if you're using one of these velvet under glazes, you do need to top it off with some of the big pink stuff. Big pink stuff is clear glaze. Why is it pink? I don't know. I didn't make this stuff. However, all of the, the, the big jug of pink is our gloss uh, clear coat. The gloss clear coat that you're going to put on top of the matte glaze to give us that, that nice shiny finish. You don't have to apply this. However, if you are making a food wear piece, you do want to apply so that everything's kind of covered. Now, the next thing on the list is the types of glazes that we have. Most of these glazes are all fine, ready to go, ready to use. However, there are some like this that inside of it, it's all these chunky little pieces like this. We're gonna just pour some water into it. I have a jug of water that I have at my station, uh, but we have sinks in the back. Just top it off with a little bit of water in the top up here. Let it sit for a few minutes. Make sure that lid screwed on nice and tight. Give it a good shake so that the water starts to uh, emulsify and create that the glaze consistency that we're looking for. Now the glaze that your glaze consistency should be like a thinnish paste consistency. You don't want it super. You don't want it super. Um, Ah, somebody put this on sideways. Um, you want it to kind of swirl in there enough. Now you want to make sure that that glaze is swirling around enough in there so that it gives a nice good quality coat over the, over the entire piece. All right, so let's talk about the different types of glazes that we have. All right, as I said already once, the velvet under glazes, the key, the key to glazes is this. Read the whole label. Read everything on here. If you need to, write down the notes. Put down, get a color pencil, color in uh, what color the glaze is into your sketchbook so that you have that those notes available for you. The sketchbook is for research and experimentation. You are needing to put as much notes in there as possible and to research your own pieces. All right, so velvet underglazes. This one here says that the um, to for a solid coverage, apply three even coats to the greenware or, or bisqueware. Now, all the pieces that we're firing, these have already been pre-bisque. They should all have that nice sound to them. They should have that sound uh, because that tells us that it, the bisque came out nice and nice and perfect. All right, so uh, once it has been, and then to fire to 04 or 05, Anything that has a zero before the other number, so 05, 04, 06, those are all low fire glazes. If it says cone four or cone five or cone six or cone 10, which I don't think we have any of that stuff, those are high fire glazes. Do not use them at all. Make sure that you guys are reading that label. All right, the next one on the list here, we have this one. Um, so, no, that's under place two. Here we go, let's just use this one. Liquid gloss glaze. This one's going to be a shiny finish. You don't need to add the pink stuff to this one. Pink stuff for underglazes, gloss, no pink stuff. Uh, now this one is uh, not used for surfaces which might come in contact with food or drink. Cannot use this on the interior of a, of a piece that comes into contact with food or drink because it's going to have a reactive, uh, it's going to react with the food or drink. Now this is uh, flame, which is gonna give me a red color. Don't wanna use that uh, near food or drink because the cadmium, which is a metal getting in with your food can poison you. So don't, you don't wanna do that. That's just bad stuff. Um, next one over here, we have leaf green, gloss glaze is written underneath. This was a dry glaze that, it was a powder, added water to it, shook it up. Now it's a liquid glaze. Um, if it's not working or anything, ask me. I'm, willing to ha I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, but make sure that you're reading those labels. Spe specifically, you're looking for stuff that says food safe or 
non-food safe because that, that depends on where you're going to put it. So my Joker mug that I'm going to be working on, I can use the red on the lips because it's not going to come in contact with food or drink. Now, as I said, this is going to be a decorative mug and I'm not going to be drinking, eat or drink out of it anyways. However, if I put that non-food safe color on the edge, the edge is going to come in contact with food or drink. Well, how's it going to come on the edge? I'm gonna drink from it. My lips are gonna to touch that glaze. The food and drink is also gonna come in contact with that glaze. You don't wanna run into those issues. So make sure that you're putting it low enough to where it's not gonna be coming in contact with those things. All right. So make sure that you are reading your glazes. You know what cone they fire to. And you know if it's a gloss glaze or an under glaze or a matte finish, like this one I had out originally, it says matte glaze, matte glaze, flat, no gloss no shine and it's going to look pretty much like the color that's in here <clears throat> then you have another one now a color oh, here we go. Okay. now the other end of the issue with glazing is this when you look at the glaze itself when you look at the glaze itself this one says clear gloss but it is clearly pink do not go by the color that the bottle is. Go by what the label says. If the label says it is Christmas tree green, but the color is red, it means the color it's gonna come out of the kiln is Christmas tree green. Trust the label, do not trust the color of the glaze. Don't think, and also, uh, if I have a yellow glaze and I have a blue glaze, well, if I mix those two together, won't I get green? No, because I'm mixing two powders of chemicals that's different now, in the yellow you have chromium you have chromium oxides which have been regulated to a specific fire range in the blue one you have a cobalt oxide which has been formulated to far fire in a high range mixing those two together a cobalt and a copper copper is a reddish uh, hue usually unless it's been in an oxidation state which then turns it into a green lots of chemical stuff don't try don't try and make up glazes that don't really get mixed on their own if you have a question about glaze always ask me and i'll be happy to help so scientific stuff don't worry about that all right <clears throat> let's talk about how to apply glaze itself now when you get your glaze Make sure you've shaken it up really well. I'm, my glaze that I made up, shake it up really well. This is a uh, like a chocolate brown color. Now you have two ways to really doing glaze in this class. Technically it's three, but it's mainly two. All right, first is the pour method. The pour method is you're going to pour the glaze out of the container into your piece and then pour it back in. I'm keeping one color in here. I'm not overlapping colors, overlapping multiple levels of crap. Anyways, my glaze, pour it in. You don't need to fill it up. You're not drinking it. Then as I pour it out, I wanna pour and rotate so that you have proper coverage. Now, you wanna work that glaze over to the edge as best as you possibly can. As it starts to come up on the side, and you want to get that round edge out of there? Pour and twist at the same time. Now, your glaze is not going to be this liquidy. That's why it's running everywhere. You want it that little bit thicker so it pours out a lot easier. So that you have nice, complete coverage. It's going everywhere. You want the nice, complete coverage that first go around so it comes out nice one time. All right, now let's say that we have a mistake on the side of our piece like this and you need to erase the mistake. That's not a problem. Just try and minimize it if all possible. So I have these sponges in the back by the sink. You're gonna take some water and you're gonna rub off the glaze and smooth out the piece. So that, that part is all cleaned up. Now you can see that there's some coloration differences between the non-glaze side and where you just wiped clean. The water is taking some of that color meaning that it's because it's wet it's going to have that darker color however <clears throat> the glaze is gone you you're fine to do your okay now once you've cleaned off the excess of your of your mug and you have to go to the next step which is the brush technique you're going to just brush it on so brush technique is really going to play into my mug that i've got on this side i'm doing it on here first because i need to practice more <clears throat> so you're going to take your glaze give it a nice shake Make sure that that lid's on. Notice how every time I shake mine, I put a finger on the top of it so I can make sure that lid's on nice and tight. I've had it fly off and be covered in glaze. It's an awful feeling. So you're gonna have a brush. You have a brush like this one. Then head over to the also at the glazing cabinet or the with all the glazes. There are a some glass jars that have like the 
spaghetti sauce jars, fill it up with water, use that as your rinse. You wanna make sure that you're rinsing out the chemicals every time if you're switching glazes so that you don't have an issue where you've, <clears throat> you just don't want an issue where you're mixing those chemicals. All right, so what I usually do is I take the paint out of the lid first because there's always gonna be some glaze there. And when you're painting on your, notice how I've got the brush turned to where I can actually pull down the line. It is easier to pull down a line than to do it across, up, down, anything. Pulling down, the brush head is usually forming in that way anyways, and gives you the cleanest line possible. So, if you need to paint a line the other way, draw, draw it on the other way, and then so that you can pull the line down so that you can create those patterns and those designs. And take your time. It's gonna take about two coats of the glaze so that you have that color on there nice and solid so it looks good as you're working. Cool. Now before you start glazing, take your piece. If there's anything on here that you didn't design out first when during the build phase, take a pencil and just draw on there your design with the pencil. Why would you do that? The pencil is going to burn off during the firing anyways. You're not going to see it. It burns off early in the firing stages and it doesn't affect the glaze or the clay at all. So, you can use that as your tracer guide so while you're painting on your colors, painting on your glaze, everything comes out just nice and neat for you. All right, so let's say that you have a glaze that you wanna use uh, like, one, like our big jug of clear glaze. I have these yogurt cups that have, you can see the pink glaze in there from prior. Use these first because then we're taking the clear glaze out of the jug, we pour it back in the jug, not wasting any extra excess glaze. If you pour it into another, into another container, we could waste it and I don't want to waste glaze that is still just good glaze. All right, so let's talk about how to clean up at the end of the period with glazes. So when you're done with the period, don't come back to the sinks because don't come back to the sinks because you don't want to put the chemicals down the sink because of the water table and it's dangerous and hazardous and chemicals, bad stuff. So you're going to take your glass, which will probably have some chemical sediment down in the bottom of it like so, and you're gonna pour it into a recycled tub. Now, what we do with the tub is for our fun mystery glaze, uh, once it's filled up, all the chemicals sink down to the bottom, I pour off the excess liquid, and you're left with this stuff, this residue. This is just a whole bunch of glaze chemicals that we just have water to, and this becomes our mystery glaze. I usually have a couple I usually have a couple milk jugs back here to pour the wastewater into to what, let it sift, sift down in and you can collect all the glaze at the bottom. So you can easily see if you look at them where the water is separated at the top and we'll pour off the excess water to where we have just the sediment at the bottom for our glazes. Now let's talk about the, the let's talk about cleaning up those brushes. When you're done with the brushes, Rinse them out in the in your water containers so that all the chemicals come out of those brushes as much as possible. Pour that wastewater out so that we save as much of that chemical component as possible because we need that glaze all the time. You're then gonna take your, your brushes back here, back to the back where you got them initially. Over here we have three uh, brush containers for our clay. Uh, these are all, all of our ceramic clay brushes. You have these wide ones which still cake down with uh, some uh, clear glaze, you want to hold on to that. Um, but then you got these nice tall brushes, fine tips, or fit better tips, to fine tip pieces if you're doing some detail work. Make sure that you put all the brushes back over here as you're, as you're finishing up. All right, guys, these are the glaze tips. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask me, and I'd have happy to help. Good luck on glazing. I look forward to seeing some awesome pieces. Hey, class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm going to get back to... Uh, doing my thing, which is uh, work on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest, or no, not, not, not we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Group Me, that's a new one for me, and Steam, uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out, like and subscribe. See you guys later, next class. Follow. See you later. Next class. Do your homework. <laughs>